In today's show, we look at players who are on hot streaks, perhaps unsustainable. Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com and at Yahoo Sports Australia. And you can find me on Twitter as always at RedRock underscore Beeble and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. We are a few days away here, of course, from the end of the NBA regular season. Let's take a look at players who over the last seven days have been playing extraordinarily well on hot streaks that may or may not be sustainable. Let's talk about that as well. And the first guy we're going to look at is for category leagues. We're going to look at DeLon Wright, who over the last week is the 10th ranked player. Now, Wright's had an up and down season. He was a guy that I was pretty keen on drafting at the end of drafts. And then in Detroit, it didn't work out. He was benched for Josh Jackson and everything went to shit. And then everyone got injured. Killian Hayes got hurt. Derek Rose got hurt and then traded. And Wright was playing like 35 minutes a night as the starting point guard. And his value went through the roof. And then guys like Dennis Smith came in and it dropped off a little bit. And then we had the trade to Sacramento where his value just completely disappeared again. And then, of course, Darren Fox and Tyrese Halliburton go down. So here we are back again with Delon Fox. Delon Fox, Delon Wright putting up big numbers. Over the last four games, 17, 8, and 7 with three steals and 1.3 blocks. They are unbelievably elite numbers. I like Dylan Wright. I've been a Dylan Wright fan for a long time. There's no way that this is real. Absolutely no chance because he's not averaging 1.3 blocks or three steals or eight rebounds per game, but he is doing everything for the Kings at the moment. There's a decent chance he remains a top 30 player for the rest of the season. Didn't think you'd hear me talking too much about Kyrie Thomas, did you? But here we are, the fourth ranked player for the season. Fourth on a per game basis. Kyrie in his three games has averaged 20 points, four rebounds, three assists, 2.7 threes, 2.7 steals, and a block. He hasn't missed a free throw. He's a perfect nine of nine from the line and he's 14, uh, sorry, 51% from the field and 36% from three. Now, there's a lot that's going to change here. The 67% from two is going to change. The 2.7 steals are going to change. The one block's going to change. The 20 points per game are going to change, but he's been excellent in these games. The thing with Thomas is that He's on a 10-day contract. We don't know if he's going to re-sign there. I imagine he will. But the other thing we don't know is what happens if Sterling Brown, Kevin Porter, Christian Wood, Daniel House, or Daniel House is playing, uh, Avery Bradley, what if they all come back? Now, they might, they may not. What if Eric Gordon comes back? Derek, David Nwaba, he's not coming back. Um, but there's a whole bunch of uncertainty about what his role is. I think he's absolutely someone that we take a flyer on and we see what's going on. But... What he's currently doing is well above any expectations because it's not just that he's on a hot streak shooting. This guy shot 29% from the field last year. Um, it's that he's doing it on huge usage, big minutes, and great defensive stats. It's all coming together unbelievably for Kyrie. Write it out. You might get it to write out for the rest of the week. You might not, and he might play 20 minutes the next game and be shit out, like Anthony Lamb or Daquan Jeffries was in the last contest. So beware of that, but hey, he's absolutely on fire. So is Faku. The 18th ranked player over the last week, Faku Kampazzo, and 25th over the last two weeks, in large part because Doja, Barton, and Morris, and Jamal Murray are all out. But let's look at his last seven games. 34 minutes, 13, 5, and 6 with 2.4 steals. We've talked about Faku a lot as being a really, really strong assists and steals streamer, and that's literally what he's doing. 2.4 steals, 6.1 assists. Everything else you get on top of that is just a bonus. The free throw is 93% from the line. In fact, he's shooting 92% over his last 30 games from the free throw line. That's excellent. On yeah, not huge attempts, but enough to be in, uh, interesting. But what we're seeing at the moment is as the usage increases and as the minutes increase, the stats are actually increasing in line with that, which is fantastic. Now, Monty Morris does return today. So we don't know, or sorry, could return today. So we don't exactly know how it's going to look for Faku when Morris is back. But I imagine the minutes stay relatively high, especially for those first few games that Morris returns. And he can keep up a level of this production. Not the whole level of it, but a, a, a decent chunk of it as a must-roster 12-team league guy. Let's go back to Houston to speak about KJ Martin, who is the 22nd-ranked player over the last week. 
41 minutes a night is your absolute red flag. Okay. Is that going to stick? Maybe, maybe not. Probably not. Again, it's a lot there with no Christian Wood. Um, and those other players like um, uh, Avery Bradley, Kevin Porter. If that all goes into minutes and usage and players pushing up and down positions, you know, Martin started some games at center, a power forward at small forward. Like he plays all these positions. So all these different guys being out does have an impact on him. But over the last four, he's averaging 23 points, almost four threes. Now that is coming on an insane 60%. Obviously, no chance of sticking, but... He is hitting 40% of his threes this year, which is a huge, huge wrinkle. Nine boards, five assists, one steal and 0.8 blocks. And really, when I looked at Martin you know, as an option, I go, well, he's going to be a block streamer. That doesn't mean the case. Like The blocks are fine, but that's not what he's doing. It's hitting a ton of threes. It's scoring a lot. It's rebounding at a high rate and doing it really, really efficiently. His last game was a little bit of a drop-off, just 15 and 9 with two steals and a block. But holy shit, Look, if you're still just getting that on a down night, then yeah. But again, it, so much of it does depend on what happens with um, with Wood and with these other players. But we don't leave him on the wave wire. We just don't expect him to be the 22nd ranked player shooting 60% from three um, on you know, 41 minutes with 23 points per game. But all that that he did, uh, it's fantastic. That makes him, KJ Martin, your Michelob Ultra Player of the Week. He's making Rockets fans happy, not because they're winning games, because they're not, but because they're looking to the future and they go, we stole this bloke in the second round, the late second round, KJ Martin, and he is giving us the enjoyment of watching these games when losing's not fun. But when you see the development of your young players, hey, it's, it can be pretty interesting. It can create that joy. And overall, that joy can create success. Enjoyment isn't the end game. It's the whole game. With Mikolab Ultra, only 2.6 grams of carbs and 95 calories. It's only worth it if you enjoy it. Are you happy because you win? Or do you win because you're happy? Kenyon Martin Jr. is your Mikolab Ultra Player of the Week. Let's go on to the next guy. And it is Dwight Powell, who, without Kristaps Porzingis, is now the 30th ranked player over the last week. Only 26 minutes a night and coming off the bench. He's doing it by averaging two blocks, 1.3 steals, 10 points, eight rebounds, but 80% from the field. Now to say that that's unsustainable is, is obvious, but he's also at 71% over the last two months. He's hitting free throws. His true shooting is absolutely coming out of his ass. 81% over the last two weeks, 76 over the last 30 games. That is an astonishing number. And you tie that in with good blocks. He's not normally a good blocks player at all, so I expect that to fall off. But the rebounds, the steals, he's imp he's averaging four assists per game over the last four. Tie that in with your field goals and your free throws. There's some real value in Dwight Powell. And I don't really mind that he comes off the bench or not. He plays 25 minutes, which I think is possible even when Porzingis returns. Um, we're going to have some pretty interesting uh, numbers come our way, I think. So he is a, a pretty solid option for now. Let's look at points leagues players. Jordan Clarkson over the last week is the 26th ranked player. Now, this is large part helped by that 41 point performance he had against the Golden State Warriors, no doubt about that. But he's averaging 28 for the season, up to 42 in the last week. That is a big, big rise. And it is helpful that his usage has jumped almost four percentage points up to 34% without Donovan Mitchell. But his usage has been 31 over the last two months anyway. It's just that the shots have gone in. He's averaging 28 real life points. His rebounds are up, his assists are up, and that's giving you big, big fantasy point numbers, 42 of them. Huge numbers from Jordan Clarkson, and I'm not convinced that Mitchell comes back at all in the regular season, so he's going to have that increased usage. Conley may or may not come back as well. Um, so there's no reason he can't be a 30-plus guy for the rest of the season here. Really good stuff from him. Mo Bamba has been putting up some good numbers. 30th ranked player over the last week, 28 minutes a night. 10 and 13 with 3.3 blocks in those 28 minutes. That's 41 fantasy points. He averages under 20 for the season. Now, we know that that under 20 for the season is because he was a third string center for a long time and it required Nikola Vucevic getting traded away and then Ken Birch getting waived and then Wendell Carter Jr. getting hurt or minimized for him to step up and he has stepped up. We have never doubted his ability to be a very good permanent player and we are seeing that play out absolutely in front of our eyes. I think this could lead to him being overvalued in dynasty formats. I don't think the Magic will look at this. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't think the Magic will look at this and go, well, I guess uh, Mobamba now is our franchise center and he'll play 30 minutes a night from next season on. I do not view this performance that way. It very well could be the case. I just don't think that is. But he is showing that you know, when the minutes are there, 
he will put up numbers. And there is no doubt about that. And he is doing that pretty comfortably at the moment. From a current Magic player to a former Magician, Evan Fournier averaging 39 over the last week to be the 39th ranked player. 22 points, 5 assists, 5 rebounds, 1 steal in 33 minutes. And with Jalen Brown out for the season, he can keep it up. He can at least keep up higher than his seasonal average, which is 29 fantasy points per game. I think he can be a 31 to 32 fantasy point per game player for the rest of the season. But his shooting has been astonishingly good in this little stretch. Now, he had some weird runs in Boston. Like, started off, I think, his first two games with big shooting and then couldn't hit anything. And then came in and uh, took a larger role with Jalen and then Kemba out and those guys. And uh, the shooting has matched it. So big numbers for Fournier. Even if there is a risk of that not being highly sustainable, the minutes and usage will be. And that's a great thing. Karis Levert is on our list as well without Malcolm Brogdon. He's been cranking. Last two weeks, 45 fantasy points. 26, 5, and 6.5 and with a steal and 1.3 blocks per game. Huge numbers. 31 usage. Yeah, ball handling and assist numbers really, really high. The scoring's high. The minutes are high. But you can tie all of this into no Malcolm Brogdon. Really, really simple equation here. So when we look at what he's doing, it's excellent. There is absolutely no doubting that. It's excellent stuff. And he's probably going to be a top 40 to 35 player next season. But top 15? I don't think so. He's the 15th, 14th ranked player of the last week, averaging 49 fantasy points. It requires a lot of things to go his way. There's no Miles Turner there as well. Not that he's a high usage player, but he's another guy that's in that lineup. No Brogdon. Um, no TJ Warren, who will be back as well. So he's putting up big numbers, um, but it is quite situational. And he does have that inconsistency with his shooting at times. And then lastly, let's go to Goose. Anthony Edwards is the 20th ranked player over the last two weeks, averaging 44 fantasy points per game. And... You know, I look at that and go 26, 7.5, and, and 4, 0.7 steals and 1.2 blocks. And I look at it and go, huh, is it actually unsustainable? Maybe the 1.2 blocks are too high, but the 0.7 steals are too low. 7.5 rebounds, too high, possibly. 26 points, 36 minutes, 27 usage. There's nothing outrageous there. Very interesting to see what the Wolves do next year when uh, Malik Beasley is ready to go and how that all fits in because that's going to be an extra wrinkle. But yeah, in a points league... Edwards is a guaranteed top 50 player next year, probably top 40, I would say, with that caveat of how does the Beasley, Russell, Edwards, Towns combination all fit, plus if they happen to keep their draft pick. But he has you know, continually and continually improved um, and really putting it together at this point in the season. Guys, that'll do it for my last hot streak video of the year. Don't forget... Um, to follow this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and on Odyssey. While on YouTube, hit the subscription, hit the notification bell, hit the thumbs up, and leave your comments down below. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya. <laughs>